right, so we're back in the shop and we are going to assess the damage from the weekend and uh, let's see what happened and uh, what we need to do to fix it. And also I wanna go over a few other things too and just kind of show you guys a few things I like to do to, to check the car over and uh, just some tips and tricks maybe that will help you guys. But uh, so first of all, uh, you know, this is, this is the next week. Um, and uh, obviously we went to the no time shootout last week and we had an issue with the transmission in the first round of eliminations. We got the win, but when I let the, let off the gas at the end of the uh, eighth mile, the something started banging really bad under the car. So I, I took it apart this morning and I found the problem. Uh, so let's kind of go over what, um, what happened here. So, uh, originally this car, uh, you know, when I built it with the one JZ, it wasn't making a lot of power, maybe three, 400 horsepower. And so I bought an, a, a drive shaft that was appropriate for that power. Okay. So the, these, uh, the ends on this drive shaft are the 1310 style U joint. So that would be this, this smaller size here. Okay. That's what's on my drive shaft. But when I switched to, you know, the Turbo 400, I, I used a yoke, this yoke here, that uses 1350 U-joints, okay? So this, this is a really, really strong yoke here. Uh, this is the bushing style, not the roller bearing style. But, you know, it has these straps and all that, and it's really strong. And that, it worked great for a while, okay? It worked really fine, and I used this U-joint that it adapts it. Okay, so you can get U-joints that go from 1350 to 1310. So that's on both ends of this drive shaft. So when you start making really good power though, uh, 1310 U-joints aren't ideal, okay? It, I mean, it lasted a long time, surprisingly. It lasted for two years of, you know, below one, two second, 60 foots. So I, I never really paid attention to it. You know, it never really dawned on me that, okay, this, this might be a, a point of failure. But uh, that last pass in, in the eliminations, um, I really stepped it up, okay? We sprayed, we sprayed it the whole track. So it, it was moving and the track was really sticky. So that's what let go, okay? So it, it, it completely, this is one half of the 1310 side. Uh, these bearings, I don't, I don't think they're messed up, but the other side was act actually completely gone somewhere on the track. I don't know, but it exploded. And then, uh, as you can see on, on the drive shaft here, it just really galled up the metal really bad. So th this is what failed. Okay. The transmission didn't fail. It was just this 1310 side of the U joint just exploded and came out, looks like it tried to come out the side. So yeah, we found the limits of the 1310 U joint. So anyway, this is gonna, this, this is gonna have to be upgraded to 1350 on both ends. Now, I don't know if, if this shaft got bent or not. My plan is to uh, take, take it over to PST in Clearwater and see if maybe they can fix it and put new ends on it and then rebalance it. If not, if they can't do that, if you know they say it's better to just replace it, then we'll replace it. But I might be able to get away with just replacing the ends, and um, you know, re replace the flange on the uh, 8.8 .8 over to this style of yoke that bolts to the uh, the pinion, and then I'll have you know both ends. I'll have this at the uh, transmission, and then another one at the uh, the, the uh, rear end. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, so that's what happened there. I, I believe the transmission's okay. Uh, I don't know why it knocked out the, the Speedo, uh, this part here. It just knocked it right out. Uh, maybe because of the shaking, I really don't know. But I'm gonna get a cover. They, they sell like uh, covers that you can bolt on. And we just delete this, we, we're not gonna use it. So. And I, I was looking at the, um, you know, looking at it real close. And I think the only thing I'm going to have to do 
is replace this um, the tail shaft housing. Okay, so I'll have to buy a new housing because the bolt that goes in here it's stripped out. Okay, on, on one side it, it completely stripped. So as you can see it all moves around because there's only one bolt on one side. The bolt just fell out completely. Uh, so yeah, I think that that's pretty much it. We should be okay. Replace the tail housing, 1350U joints, and I think it'll be much stronger for those launches. So yeah, it's just one of those things where you find you find weak points and stuff like that, but it's not a it's not a big deal. This, you know, this is much better news than um the transmission exploding. I, I really thought, you know, seeing parts in the uh, blanket, I thought it was I thought it was done for. So Anyway, uh, I've been going over a few other things. Um, so we ran, <clears throat> I got this, I got it up in the log. Uh, we got it up to 42 pounds of boost, okay? So we made 42 pounds of boost on that last pass, which is about six pounds or five or six pounds more than I've ever run. Uh, so that was most likely the fastest pass I've ever been on, even though I didn't get a slip. I have no idea. But uh, so, and we did get, this is what came out of, we got a little bit out of the catch can. You've got like some milky stuff in there. That's pretty much like ethanol mixed with oil. So really it's only that much oil in the catch can. And that's for the, pretty much the whole weekend. Uh, the rest of this is like ethanol. There, there's no head gasket issue or anything like that. Um, so when you run that kind of boost though, you will get some um, crankcase pressure. It's inevitable, you, you can't stop it. You know, I got the rings gapped for a good amount of boost. And when you do that, you're gonna get a little bit of blow by and crankcase pressure, okay? But as far as like, it didn't pressurize the um, coolant system or anything like that. So we don't have any kind of head gasket issue. Um, the oil still looks great. You know, there's no, no issue with that. I mean, it still looks like, you can see it or not. Kind of hard to tell, but uh, the oil still looks like really fresh. So, and then I did also, um, uh, this morning I also took the valve covers off and checked all the lash. And uh, shout out to Dave at Head Games. The lash checks out exactly like I when I got the head two years ago. So the lash hasn't changed one bit. It's uh, nine thou on the intake and 12 thou on the exhaust. And I checked every single one of them and they all check out exactly the same. Amazing. So, uh, the, so the last thing I wanna check is, you know, we have those, um, those Chinese rods in this car, the manly rods, I mean, max speeding rods. Uh, so that's the only other thing I want to check. And I want to give you guys just a little quick uh, way to check your rods to see if maybe you, you bent a rod or anything like that. It's, it's a real simple way to do it and um, take you five minutes. And all you need is a set of digital calipers, okay? So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to set the calipers at zero, um, you know, get them set at zero and you're going to rotate the motor and you're going to put the this flat spot here it's hard to do with uh, one hand but the flat spot you're going to put that where your uh spark plug seats okay and then you're going to run the you're going to roll the motor over until it the piston goes to the highest point and then what you're going to do is you're going to write down the number that you get on your caliper okay write it down and then you're going to go through and do that on every cylinder okay it won't be the most accurate thing in the world because, you know, like your spark plug seats aren't all perfect. You know, they get a little bit galled up from torquing your spark plugs. But this is going to give you like a really general uh, idea of your, your, you know, the, the height of your piston. So if you get anything, like if you get one of your pistons that shows a really, a much different height than any of the other ones, uh, then you most likely have a bent rod, okay? That's really the only thing that can cause that, your, your height to be much different than in the other ones, okay? Like when we bent rods on the 1J, 
uh, that's how I know, that's how I found the problem. Okay. I noticed that the height of the piston wasn't coming all the way to the top of the bore. And, and when you, when I took it apart, the, um, I don't know where they are. They're somewhere over here. I, oh, right here. You can see it right here, right there. Look how bent that is. Okay. So that looks, so when you measure that, it's a noticeable difference when it comes up to the top of the bore. It won't, um, it won't come all the way up. So I'm going to go through and measure all those and uh, we'll see what we come up with. All right, guys. <clears throat> okay. So hopefully y'all can see this. Um, so what you do is you basically get your piston down far enough so where you can extend your caliper. So, you know, you got it set at zero. Okay. And then you just extend it down to whatever, two and a half inches. doesn't really matter. And then you're going to hold the top of the caliper. Okay. And you're going to rotate the motor, uh, try to hold it, you know, flat on the, uh, where the piston or the, uh, where the uh, spark plug seats, and then you're going to roll the motor over and the piston's going to come up. As it comes up, it's going to move the caliper. You can see, go slow. And then it's going to stop and the piston's going to go back down. Okay. So what you're, what you end up with is a number. So right now it's a uh, 1.28. So I'm going to write that down. All right. So couldn't find a piece of paper. So I'll just write on this. So you just do number one and it was 1.28. Okay. So you just write it down, move on to the next. Same thing, extend it down so that it's going to uh, catch the piston as it's coming up. Okay, same thing. I suppose you could bump the motor over doing this, but I mean, probably safer doing it, you know, by hand. Okay, so. And it's probably the best to do it in order. Um, so the firing order is uh, one, three. So let's go to three. So that way you're not having to roll the motor over too much. All right, here it comes. Okay. And it stopped. Okay. And look at the number we have, 1.289, okay? So we'll write that one down. So number three, well, oh yeah, we'll put two there, we'll put three here. So it was 1.28 with a nine. I forget what that one was, but uh, I think you guys understand where I'm getting at here, okay? So we're gonna keep going until we get them all on here and we're going to see if there's any difference. If there's any, if they're all the same, there's no bent rods. So you, you, it's not possible to have a bent rod if they're all the same. Okay. All right, let's move on. One, three, and then <clears throat> five would be next. Two, three, four, five. Okay. Comes. These are um, okay. So this one is 1.287. Okay, so you guys are getting the theme here of what's going on. So four, five, six. So five was 1.287. So these little differences is, like I said, it's just the, you know, the surface where the spark plug is seating. It just may be a little bit galled up on one, a little bit more than the other. It really, that's, this is perfect, okay? So let me go through the rest of them. I'll, I'm, I won't do it on video. I just wanted to kind of show you the first couple and uh, let's see where we end up. Okay, so we got them all measured uh, and the numbers are 
28, 287, 289. This one's 285. I kind of scribbled a little. And 287 and 287. So they're pretty much all the same. Now, you can't really do this like on a V8 because of the angle of the uh, spark plug. So you, you would be, as the piston's coming up, it's more, it's kind of a weird angle. But on any kind of an inline engine, whether it, you know, an inline four cylinder or a 2JZ or any other inline engine where the piston comes straight up, you can easily check it like that. Uh, it's a common thing, you know, it's a common thing to bend rods in, in these cars. So, you know, check that out. If you're having, one way I found out that um, I bent a rod was it just wouldn't spool. Like the doing a compression test worked really good. Uh, it was the compression was great across the board, but the car wouldn't make any power. Okay. The engine just would not come up on the trans brake. And, uh, that was what I found that the rods were bent in a few cylinders, lowering the compression to the point where it wouldn't make boost. So that's just a couple things you guys can check. Uh, I mean, this is, these are the plugs from the whole weekend. I never changed them. The tune looks really good. You can see. A little bit of corrosion on it, but that's just from the ethanol. Uh, everything looks really good. I think the tune was spot on for the most part. We did, I did notice in the log that uh, towards when it was made, it made its peak boost, uh, it went a little bit lean. Just for like a second, maybe a half a second, it went lean. But uh, what I found was is that our fuel pressure started to tail off. So what does that mean? We're running out of fuel pump. So I'll have to address that at some point uh, with those kind of boost levels. Probably have to either add another pump, use, you know, do triple pumps, which is not uncommon. A lot of super guys that are making 12, 1300 horsepower will run triple pumps. Okay, this is not, that's not um, out of the ordinary. So right now I'm only running two of the D Shworks 350 pumps. And so far they've been really good, but when you start getting into that 42, 43, whatever, boost range uh, requires a lot of fuel. So we were kind of maxing out the, inje the injectors were trying to compensate for the fuel pressure dropping. So, uh, so we'll have to address that. Uh, that's not a big deal, adding another pump. But anyway, uh, this, I don't want this video to get too long, so that's probably gonna do it. Uh, we got a few things to fix, but other than that, it's not, not too bad. So uh, hopefully we'll get this thing back at the track. I don't know what events are coming up next, but I'm, I'm really uh, happy with the way it ran and how it performed. Everything went well. There's a few things I'd like to change on it, but we'll, we'll save that for future videos. And uh, yeah, so that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something and um, check y'all later.